there's certainly a mystique that's gone now that you know the, the, the curtains are unveiled on on how to do certain technical yes, techniques. Yes, yes. Especially with singing and stuff, right? Mm. Like it's almost like by numbers. Yes. But what is the new mystique? What is the new thing that is curiously uh, not doing it by numbers? Yeah. That's the new mystique. Think about everything. Whatever the new mystique is going to be the opposite of what the mystique is. So what the new mystique is, I guess. Yeah. What, what is that? D- d- just not doing what everyone else is doing. <laughs> That's like the coolest shit I've heard. <laughs> killer Keller. Podcast. Killer Keller. <laughs> you need the television app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NoPolandRecords.com Beatbox created And we're here to talk about world music and street culture Killer Keller podcast No holds barred, I love it when they say that Yeah man, we're talking <laughs> Some amazing guests so come on Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast Live and direct central London As you need to be And believe me, it's all you can afford to be around here Big shout out to GraffitiKings.co.uk Hold tight to all the originals, uh, of course, noldpolandrecords.com um, and, uh, yeah, strangestation.co.uk, all affiliates and support. There's people that have been sharing and caring from the jump, thank you. Uh, television app, free download for your street culture, sports, the sporting art, mixes, podcasts, live streams, a lot. It's all on there, go get it. Free download, Android, iPhone. We have a very good friend of mine, not to mention the seamlessly soulful voice throughout my career, because the moment <laughs> I started was when we first started, yes. and she's here in the building, Terry Walker. <laughs> Hello, my love. Hello. Oh, to be here. You know, this is like the interviewer being interviewed now. This is... Oh, yeah, that's true, actually, isn't it? I guess, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm doing my own shows as well. You're doing your own shows, isn't it? Yes. Did you ever think... Because here's the thing. We... Uh, we kind of orbited around the same paths when we was doing music. Yep, yep. And lo and behold, we're both kind of in this kind of zone now. Yeah. Do you think this is like a, a, a natural course for the likes of Dons such as us? Don? I would like the way Dons. I like to say Dons. Do you know it's funny? Because I, I always, used to, always used to be one of the people, I just want to sing, I don't care about anything else. And I did for a long time until obviously... The way being an in, in, independent artist now is like you have to kind of know what you're mm. doing yourself, and mm. and I, I love the fact that me I haven't I haven't got to this stage yet where I'm setting up cameras and doing all this because that's my head. <laughs> I'm already me. all over the place. I'm like, oh my god, I can't do this. But um, I think it's I think it's, it is a natural progression. I think it's important. It is, isn't it? Because mm. it, the, the music does ultimately become a soundtrack to somebody. But yep. when it's yours as well, yep, yep, you can do whatever you want within. You can this do whatever way. you want. If you want to cook, if you want to become a I don't know if you want to tell a story, if you want to do films, you could do whatever you want to do. Yeah, it is true. And and when you think about back in the day, especially, it, it was I guess it was a lot more subtle, but there yeah. was certainly these moments of like Justin Timberlake suddenly owning a bottle of vodka oh, and yes. then doing films. Yes, and then, yes, yes. Do you yes, mean, yes. it's always been the way, isn't it? Yeah, it's true, because I think back then, I think maybe because of social media now, we're, we're so aware of things, but back then you just said it, people were just doing it. Yeah. And also you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know people's opinions. You'd put something out, you don't know if someone hated you or liked you until mm. you got to the show, mm. if people turned up or people didn't turn up or how, what their reaction was. But now you know mm. before you even know anything, which I kind of think takes away from, you know, yeah. the art a little bit, because then you're... You're kind of preempting what you're doing first, when we should just be spontaneous. Yeah. Remember what, seeing you the first time, like you, you used to just blow everybody away, away when you used to start. Like remember, when you used to do your thing, like yo. And remember, you're so unassuming. Thank you. Remember, you'd be like, "Hi guys," and you'd be like, "What? What the hell?" So I'm just going to offload on you here. No, but you're so, you're so, I still are so dope. Do you know what I mean? And I think those are those are the days that I'm kind of missing because nowadays everything, too, you know too much before you even, because sometimes mm. I want to hear first and then I want to find out about you after, you, you know, know what I mean? too much. Yeah, it's true. It's, um, mm. it's an open, it's, a, it's an open uh, pot of, jump on social media and you just, mm, you, it's mm. almost like you've got to do as much as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas to, before... To get people in, to get people... Like, oh, she likes she likes white socks. I like white socks. Da, da, da. So you're just getting people in. Sometimes people might like <laughs> certain things, but it doesn't mean that everything else you're going to like as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because there's so many different sides to us, isn't there? Because well, so. we don't tell the affiliate sponsors that. We, yes, yes we fun. like everything, yes. <laughs> we like everything and they're going to love it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. See, this is what I'm saying. See, what is having to say to yourself? It's annoying. Yeah, that's that is another thing as well. The whole <laughs> the whole sensory thing. Which, well, let me pull that back from yeah, the because I don't want you leaning too far back. We yeah. a guest that needs to relax in here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Nowadays, especially with the presence of things and how you've got to keep the engine, keep the machine moving, <sighs> it is actually bonkers. Mm. You've all, it's almost like people have overexposed themselves to the point where 
they have to watch what they say. Yeah. Second guess everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's not, and I think this is the reason why a lot of people end up having depression, anxiety, why they, you know, start caring about what they look like, putting filters on their face, mm. see them in real life, they look nothing like that. And I think I got to a point where I've got my new album coming, it's called My Love Story. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, believe and then, me. Yeah, but it's going, and it's like me going back to the place of when I first started out, I knew nothing about the music industry. Mm. All I knew is that I wanted to sing. And that's how I, and, and that's why I would keep going to things and keep mm. challenging myself and pushing myself because I wasn't, I wasn't putting this pressure on myself. I just wanted to be there and just absorb. Mm. Nowadays, I'm too aware of things. So I'm like, I don't want to go around there. I don't really like that. Mm. don't really like this. Mm. I didn't care what I liked back then. Now I just, you know, but I'm kind of going back to that place now where mm. I'm here absorbing again. Absorbing and being a part of the scene. And yeah. like you say, it's, it, there's this need and desire, especially when you're younger, to attend everywhere, get the yes. big budget and do yep, as much as yep. you can. Yep, yep. I feel like with the likes of Jay-Z's and the Beyonce's now, which were definitely like our, our you know, higher esteems, you know, yeah. for, for the time that we were coming up through, there was, there's certainly this um, uh, notion that to have them back in the public eye now because they'd already set the bar so high mm -hmm. in what they were doing back yeah. in the day. They can't just jump in and be a little bit more like we are now, yeah. which is it more absorbent to an immediate below the but, um, line scene. It's funny you said that because I feel like Jay-Z, with the fact that his hair is the way it is and the fact that she's quite... And I think now they're having parties, but they're involving people in it. I think they're, they're, this is probably the most, on the ground level, I've seen him there, they're doing For it sure. crazy big, but this is the most... Yo, we're kind of we're seeping in from you because I think everything that they do now is is inspired by the people. Mm. You know I mean? Everything that they've done now has kind of been done before, but they've it's just been, been inspired by them. Exactly. So they become almost like the DNA of the people, and it. Yeah, no, but I think as well that they're quite openly now, now open about the people that have inspired them. Like if you look at Jay Z, I see Basquiat. I look at Beyonce. I see, I see, um, oh. I see Diana Ross. I see, you know what I mean? I see all these different yeah, yeah, people yeah. because they Tina Turner. Tina, like. do you understand? Us before they were like, no, we are the greatest. We are the this. Da, da, da. Yeah. Now I think they're taking on board. Like, no, we weren't here before. Like the people yeah. that we've now we 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 become the people that we were, you know, that kind of paved the ways for us. So yeah. that's what I mean. When I look at them, I don't see Jay Z and Beyonce anymore. I see. People that have grown and they've kind of you know learned that you know yeah. this 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 is an overgoing this is an ongoing story it never ends. It's, it's a beautiful. That's mm. very romantic and I love the idea. Mm. It's so sick. I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like you know in a in a world where you've got a niche down on your on your genre and your thing and you know the algorithms and how important yeah. you, you know what it is. Uh, it's quite nice the idea of just being really accepted for who you are yep. and knowing your knowing what you are knowing your worth man yeah. yeah but the thing is you don't know your worth until you experience it like i think the things that i know now back then and i was you know like when people say be humble i was humble because i know i didn't know anything and i knew i had to earn it until the moment i realized this is my voice and this is this is how i know how to draw my audience in that's not like okay i know my worth but i'm still learning but i know this is this is terry walker and the other bits are just Terry Walker absorbing. Like right now, I'm mm. absorbing how you're. I'm watching the cable. I'm like, yo, your place is dope. I love the way you put this stuff on. Oh, we're out here, man. We're out here. But it's dope because but, but you've 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 been very. You've always kind of known who you were for quite from from early, haven't you? You've been really into. Yeah, yeah. The, but by and large, I don't. You know. You don't have a, I mean, I, I get that impression with you as well, which is really nice. Yeah, I knew I wanted to sing, but I didn't... Like, when it comes to genres, I was just... I just wanted to do music. Because I yeah. think you're, you're hip-hop, you know, you're graffiti, yeah. you're... You know. I think that can sometimes throw people, like, <laughs> my girlfriend, God bless her, like, she, she has a lot of times where she's doing, being creative, but because she hasn't got the outlet of a genre... Yeah. I think it's quite hard, you know. Mm. If I'm going to do some art, I know it's going to look like graffiti. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It's, kind of just, <laughs> it's going to hit the <laughs> I you know, it's going to end up. Yeah. It's like it's like making a Duran Duran record. I've got no doubt that they start with all the best intentions of doing something that doesn't sound like Duran Duran. <laughs> and <laughs> and it's it's like, okay, what about it? But you're right because like everything that I do ends up being quite soulful, a little bit jazzy, which that's my thing, isn't it? Mm. So I'm I'm soulful and I'm jazzy, and I have to I have to run away from that. No, I'm not so. I can do everything, but. No, but ultimately, your your the common denominator when you hear me is a soulful, jazzy type of vocal. So, mm, and it's yeah. beautiful. Thank you. So many, like I say, soundtrack, Compar comparables or contemporary, you know, uh, people that and I know you frequent with them. You know, people like Sheila Amma, Kelly LaRock, and Love all these Kelly dons, you know, of, a, of a, you know Lisa Mafia. Put Lisa Mafia in the same oh, bracket. Lisa, love uh, you know, just just dons, pe people that. Again, a, a, a part of the lineage of what is the nowadays mm. equivocal of, well, I don't know, maybe like Soul to Soul back in the day or some shit. Yeah, come on. They were before all the people you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, totally. Soul, so, yeah, this so. is like, the, you're like the, the the statesman of this generation. Do you know what I mean? The statesman of like the, the, the hot, you know what I mean? Like, I feel that. And it's so weird you said it because for me, as far as I'm concerned, like me, 
I wouldn't be able to do half the things as all the people that you mentioned. I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for them. So I look at them as the statesmen. Mm. Mm. But no, I think. But now I think I am the statesman for who I am now. Before I didn't. I wasn't anything. I just mm. was someone that wanted to sing. Mm. Now I'm definitely. Now I'm Terry Wilson. I've got I've got this um this um, um Fitbit. So every time my phone does something, it vibrates. And my phone, I'm like something's vibrating. Oh, it's my phone. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I thought for real. Like if you if anyone that knows Terry, like she will literally go ten to the dozen vocally. Like you've really got to try and like slide down. Like you've yeah, really got so, to. Sorry, so I'm I, thought, I thought I thought I thought for a minute there it was telling you to slow down. I was I like, know, yeah. like, like I know people keep saying. I need to slow down. I can't help it. I don't know why I speak so far. I'll tell you, man, I see it's, her, it's Hurricane Walker coming through the Hurricane building, man. Hurricane Walker, you know. So good. It's like, she's in, it's like you're the, the your biggest, biggest, like, drive coming into a place. You, the, the personality, the smile, the <sighs> giggles. This isn't our first rodeo, neither. I, I know. That podcast we did, that, um, well, a few years ago. Just yeah, before, a few years ago, before, yeah. before lockdown. Just before Thai Pass, R.I.P. Thai. Was it just before Thai yeah, Pass? it was about six months Because Thai before. came down that mm. day. That yeah. was such a lovely day, that was. That, that was, was wicked. One, that was awesome. Yeah. Bless him, bless Ty. Um, and Rodney P was there. Yeah, Rodney came out. Um, Illaman and Peng Shui, all those Illaman, that's when I met, yeah, Illaman and Peng Shui, yes. That was a really good night, man. It was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and me, though, we got wasted. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me either. It wasn't me. <laughs> oh, man. It was me, probably. It's a light, light <laughs> relief when you've got, you know, when you... When you have the opportunity to chill and do your job, yep. that shit's the best. Isn't it's it? the best, and I think, as you said, we we I'm gonna really slow down. We are in time. We are in a time right now, yeah, <laughs> where we can, um, as you said, like if you want to do a podcast about your shoelaces, you can. And because yeah. the thing, there's gonna be a, a good maybe a million people out there that love different types of shoelaces. Yeah. So as long as you, but as long as you do your research and you can, and you're really passionate about it, and you're mm. not just trying, because I find a lot of people are trying to ting. So when you try to ting, mm, yeah, no, they're you're not trying, trying to ting. You're no, not no. trying. You've been doing this. I've been doing this. Yeah, we walk it, we talk it. Yeah, so, but there's people that have been. Oh my god, this is cool right now. Let's let me do mm. that. Okay, mm. but no, we're not we're not about that. So and I think now's the time where people that are, are a bit more niche mm. and are doing more like you know they're doing their own thing. They're kind of finding their own little grooves now, and I love really it. Really are. Um, Soho Radio. Did you ever think, like, mm. what was the what was the deal? So, tell us about the show. Tell us about the show that you'd been doing. So the show. I don't need to get you on that actually. Um, yeah, yeah. The show is called The Mountain Pop, and um, again, it's about all the ingredients that have shaped me to become the person that I am. So everyone that's ever so everyone that comes, some of the people, sometimes people would be like, oh, can you can you should get this person on? I'm like, but I don't know them, and it's like it's not people that are famous or are doing anything cool right now. It's all people that I've met personally, that I've connected with personally, that I've had an experience with. Even if I met you yesterday, but you made me feel something. I'm like, yo, now I want to know what your story mm-hmm. is. So um, so what I do, I get the person on. So I have the radio show and then I have the live the live night and the radio show. Um, it's two hours. And I get people to send me like 16 songs. The first few songs that spoke to them, like the first record that ever that you ever heard that made you go, whoa. And then um, the first song that you, if you are artist or producer, the first song, song that you ever released to the world and then the rest of it, like the soundtracks to your life of where you were for your 30 years. And everyone usually goes, oh, two hours. By the end of it, everyone's like, yo, I didn't realise how much I've done or where, this song, where I was when this song hit me. And then by the end of it, we, but I played the song from beginning to end and we just talk about where you were, how you felt, how it impacted you. And it's just, it's one of them ones where everyone kind of, it takes people back into to their childhood. Replenish. It replenishes your soul. Yeah. And it reminds you of like, yo, I've come a long way. I've done a lot of stuff, man. Mm. And usually it te- people tend to want to come on again. And then the live show, I kind of just, I kind of like to just transfer it to the, to the dance floor. So I have a DJ and a, an artist that performs and then we just party for the rest of the night. Yo, that is good. And that's at Chip Shop Brixton, so. Yeah, a whole tight Chip Shop Brixton, of course. Like yeah. Uh, yeah. a family, family associates right there. Yeah. Um, I would imagine, like I was saying, the the idea of uh, going back into your roots, so yep. to speak, because I, mean, I know you've had Goldie, you've had a whole bunch of people. Yeah, I've had that Goldie, I've through. had Jules Holland, I've had Frisco, I've had Omar, I've had <laughs> Deneo, Kelly Lewark, Nene. Yeah, no, and I've so much more people that I want to have. I mean, we don't do basic on podcasts, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we only have the Dons. Rodney, I've had Ty, I've had everyone on, yeah. Yeah, man, and I, mm. I, my, my gut response to that is I would love to hear what was the first, what was the first tune that got Goldie off? Oh, obviously I have to remember. I have to go back and listen to that. But I've, mm, I have to listen back to his show because it was it was a while back. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But there must be some moments where you're just like, really, you fucked with that one? You no, I'm it? telling you, some people you like, but a lot of people I find um, there's a lot of the like a, like a Caribbean diaspora like, where a lot of people that like, came on from from Jules to Goldie to they look they chose a lot of the same records. Did they from was well, starting out because I think from that not I think because of the culture. Mm. So a lot of them are very very heavily reggae influenced. Really, on. and I thought I was like, yo, a lot of you've chose some some of the same records, and other people obviously chose completely different records. But there were records some records that a lot of people chose. 
Okay. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Which then obviously probably may- maybe makes sense as to why we've all kind of connected somehow. I don't know yeah. why, but it's very interesting. There must be some wild cards as well where you maybe could get the tenacity or energy of a particular song, but, but being it not in the same genre, yeah, yeah. you could kind of get the influence of why they probably become yeah. what they became. Yeah, 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 100%. Because there, there was like songs, um, there was like, oh, God, that came on in. And you could hear, like she, she chose... Um, Olivia Newton John, but I could hear in their music, even though she sounded really soulful, but I could hear why she chose Olivia, because I could hear mm-hmm. the lyrics or even just the way she sang certain notes that she sang. I thinking, oh my God, this is why you why you chose her, because mm-hmm. I can hear it in your voice, or I can hear it in the lyrics, or or in the sound of some of the things that you do musically, you know. So, so sick. Yeah, it's done. Well, then on that note, let's go back. Let's go back to your childhood. Yeah. Let's go back to the oh start. Yeah. Tell us where it all began for you, my dear. Uh, my, my dear. My dear. But, um, I was born. I was born in Wimbledon and Roehampton. Um, age of four, I moved to Germany, and then I lived there until I was eighteen. But I went to boarding school in England in in Surrey from the age of eleven until I was eighteen. But I was still living. It's very confusing. But I still lived in Germany, so I'm like this cross between Germany and England. So and you're then, back and forth in Germany and England. Yeah, yeah. From the age of eleven until I was eighteen, back wow, and forth. Wow, wow, wow. But I was living um in Ger- I moved to Germany when I was four, but when I was back and forth when I was eleven. And um, then my and then my, my my family said my heritage is Jamaican, so so we've got the Jamaican, German, English, and then just and remember America and Germany is very heavily um, American influenced, so yeah, everything was sure. very USA. So growing up over there, I was very much into my starter and my Hilly Hansen and my. Mm. I was when you come over here, everyone was into their ballets, their click suits, and their you know their clerks, and it was a, yeah. and it was and even speaking with an English accent in Germany, like oh my god, like no one has to hear the accent, it's so whack. Really, uh, but but then wow. when I come back over here after that, America, Americans would be like, that's amazing. But English, I mean, the German people were like, oh, the English accent is so dry. But Americans would be like, yo, you say that again? What did you take the piss? What? Oh my god, that's so dope, man. <laughs> uh, but I, growing up in Germany, everyone's just like, oh, no one's here, no one's here about England. England's dry. But then coming over to England now, everyone, everybody wants to be English, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was definitely a lot of that. You had a mild identification crisis. You must uh, no, I did. Know oh where my you god! Were. When I came back, my accent was mad. I like everyone kept saying to me, they kept calling me German sausage. Like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Which is god. A, a, so random, isn't it? especially as a black woman. It was like, but isn't it racist over there? I'm like, I, I experienced one racism, one racist, I mean, like a situation with this older lady that told me to go back to my country. But oh. otherwise, it where was, was that in Germany? In Germany, but otherwise, it was such a um, hmm. for me, like, because there was so many different. There was a lot of Turkish. There was a lot of um, African. There was there wasn't that many Caribbeans where, where I grew up. Yeah. But then there was a lot of Yugos, Yugoslavian. So like, I, I I got to experience a different. Oh, is that the noise? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're got, underground. Yeah. I, I, ooh, like we yeah, hear it, dude. Yeah, right. I've got to experience a lot of different cultures. But then once I understood my culture, I you just you just you just fit it in. Yeah, yeah, everyone everyone was for somebody trying to make it over there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and I would also say like there is a, a uh, I don't know. There's a, an assumption mm. that. People in Germany, Germany are only white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely yeah, yeah, delusional. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's the, it's like we're truth. not stuck in the forties here, man. Like Babe, life, things have moved. It's mad. Like, oh, Hitler's still like no. Yeah. But like, when people ask me about England, oh, is it always raining? Do they all drink tea and yeah, crumpets? Yeah, shit. Like no, it's well, not. Yeah. It doesn't. That's because what you see on TV, like. Yeah. Well, if you, and this is one thing I say to people: like when you go to these countries, you get to experience it, mm. and that's why for me, even because I spoke the language instantly. Because I, I spoke it, everyone talked to me differently. Then I think if I'd mm. gone there without trying to speak the language, people would have been like, what are you doing here? Go back mm. to your country kind of thing. But worldly from the jump, were you? You were well, just like... When, you know when you're young and you learn language and when you're young, you absorb yeah. it like it's nothing, innit? Yeah. So I learned German apparently like within a month. I said, I said, my mum said I spoke it fluently within a month. Can you remember it now? In Turnish, please, yeah. Ah. Von der Aufgewachsen. 100,000 Möglichkeiten. 100,000 Möglichkeiten. Oh, woher weißt du das? Yeah, that was because it was forced on me to learn it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but well, she was giving away free credits if I was, if we, you know, if everyone said the same word like a thousand oh, no times. no way. Yeah, yeah. Anything I was, for free credit, eh? Yeah, I was a rich man for that, a yeah. boy for that time, yeah. <laughs> You've been to Germany, but they must love you in Germany. Yeah, man, and I did the foolish of foolish things as a young boy. I said to myself, oh, I'm, I'm not going to learn German, I'm going to drop out of it because I'll never go to Germany. Oh, and Germany's a big market for you. Huge. I, I went there at one stage, I was there more than I was in my life. Yeah, home. I can imagine. Silly. I, no, but silly boy. You say so silly. Because mm. like, like, I, I remember my mum had, had me in French lessons and stuff, and I just stopped. But it's like, it doesn't stop you from doing what you're doing. It, it, yeah, it really is. doesn't. And like you say, quite a cosmopolitan um, country, is that? Yeah, yeah. And they, 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 they're just, like, they're big into their hip hop, into their reggae, into yeah. their soul. They're big into everything as long as you're good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because remember, Germans are very far. You know, they really are very far. Yeah, they do. So if you're not good at it, 
piss off. Exactly. And at this point, I must just say, big shout out to Curse, big shout out to Sammy Deluxe, big shout out to Tony L and all the Steber twins, all the legends and dons that are over there. Let's not forget for saying this. Pick up yourselves. Pick up yourselves. Um, so, when did the soul bug hit? When did this kick in? So this is the thing. I said, um, as I said, like with the Mountain Pot, the first record that I ever heard that touched me. This is the reason why I started the show because I never forget it. I remember my mom used to have um, she had a lot, she had a lot of vinyl, and she had this. Um, is it forty five inch when they're smaller? That's right, yeah. And it's record by Phyllis Nelson called Move Closer. Move closer, oh my move God. your body yeah. real close. Until we Ooh. feel like we really make it. Like, wow. And I remember hearing that for, as a child and thinking. Like, my whole body just went, oh, said, I want to make people feel the way this woman makes me feel. Mm. And I remember I must have been about four or five. And I, this is how, you, how well, because I moved there when I was like eight. And, I, and I, remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. So every time I hear that record, I'm like, oh, my God, from the way it starts. So that's what I think to myself. I know everybody has that experience of that first record. But what's mm. the first record that you ever heard? Do you, that you remember that you can remember and go, you know what, yo, this made me go. Oh, jeez. Uh, um, almost certainly, if I was to put it up there. From that, I mean, it... Guns N' Roses was a big one for me. See, how old did you, do you know? How old you were? I was about 11. 11, see? But it's, it's yeah. just random, because that's, that's when it hits you. That's when it hits, yeah. like, whoa! But then, then other ones did come into play, like, when I got... Because that was short, that was reasonably short-lived. I mean, I, I then was into Anthrax and Public Enemy, and through that I got to Yeah, hip-hop. yeah. When I heard Keep On Moving, Soul to Soul, that did, for me... There's was... so many. There's, but this is the thing, but I think, because wow. like, even that record, it was very soulful, but then I was very into my hip-hop after that as mm. well, and then, you know... Mm. And obviously I grew up in Germany, so there was a lot of everything going on. There was... David Hasselhoff, no, I was into David Hasselhoff, by the way. But there was David Hasselhoff, there was, there was Soul to Soul, there was whatever. But like, but the first thing that, that ever made me go musically, like voice and, I was just like, wow, music mm. for me. I just knew that music was my thing. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew music was going to be my thing. Oh yeah, and it, it does capture you. Do you think it captures people in the same way in 2020, whatever's we're in, wherever you're listening to it? It feels like it becomes a, like we were saying at the start, mm. a soundtrack for people rather than a, 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 a. I mean, there are people that use it as pleasurable pastimes, but yeah. it's it's such a one-dimensional thing when you check out the content, the videos. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. What do you reckon? Do you reckon it's... Me, so this is the thing? What I realized, like for instance, when I first started out, I hated house music. Oh my god, I hated it with a passion. I could mm. not. This is reduced. This used to be this record by Fragmore. <laughs> if you wanna save the day, then and that's to see the video. I was I'm like, I need it. I to hate the video. I hated everything about it. And then one night, just being honest, I had one of those nights where I got on it and I experienced it through another realm. Rose-tinted spectacle, yeah. shall oh we say. Oh, my God. And, and from that day on, I, I never turned back. I love house music so fucking much. Yeah, like, it's yeah, one of my yeah. favourite things. And that song now, like, I don't even listen to the version where she's singing it. I listen to more the version with the house version where, you know, the remix yeah. version and she comes yeah. in. And I'm like... I, in my mind, I thought to myself, how have I never experienced this before? So I think people do still experience this, but it depends on how and when they, and who they experience it with. So yes. if, you, if you set them, like if you go to a festival or you, or you have a party or everyone's had a few drinks and you have the conversation and someone comes on and it's like, it's about how you set it. But back then, you know, your, your yeah. parents were playing it and, or, you know, you'd hear it in a movie or like... You know, so like, true. Have you noticed like with, um, what's it called? Um... Uh, what's that series that everyone loves? Stranger Things. And then apparently, you know... Um, um, uh, Kate Bush. Yeah, Kate Bush. He just went through it because of that film. So it's the way how people, you know... Yeah, how they it. do. And not, like you say, it's it's what the vehicle is that they discover well, it on. Yeah. But also the ways in which they they overtly change it. They change it to suit um, a particular audience. A situation, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Like, just going back to that whole premise of, the, you know, like Shola. Like, yeah. I remember that Imagine tune. I love that Imagine oh, tune yeah, anyway. Yeah, 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 but when I heard the Garage version... All of a sudden, I liked Garage. There you go. See? It, yeah, you know I mean, switched it a whole switched genre it up. for me. And there's been some people like, no, I don't like Garage. But then like, the other day, we was at Carnival, my sister's like, I can't stand so cock, it's my nose. But then there's this song that's out, drink water and mind my business. <laughs> drink water and. And now, that was like our favourite song now. Ooh, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. And then obviously, you know, we hear it in Carnival throughout the years of growing up. Yeah, but then yeah. that song, because of what he's saying, drink water and mind my business. And like, <laughs> yo, we could never be friends. And the next minute now, that's our favourite song. So it shows you, you could say, oh, I don't like hip hop, I don't like rock, I don't like soul, I don't like classical. Hear it in the right context, you'll fall in love with that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, 100%. And this is what I know about, because I was classically trained when I was at boarding school. 
So the only way that I could get singing lessons was by being um, taught opera, to sing opera. And my, my, my teacher always used to be like, oh my God, why do you want to sing this secular music? Because I wanted to sing Whitney Houston song. Because oh, you'd be such, you'd do so much, so well, because you can really do it. But my heart was in doing it soulful. Mm. But now when I look back, I'm like, it was the best training that I could have ever had. I bet. And it's the most, and the thing is, when, when, when you go to, to an opera or even just like to any of those kind of, you know, events like you see the, the control and the way that they because the, mm. there has to be signs you can't be you know you can't be talking over you know like when you go to some mm. things, people talking over the, the audience you can't talk when, when someone's singing an aria you can't talk you're not allowed if you're talking you're being disrespectful that's so, right so, it's like going to Japan and doing a gig there they just it, clap 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 really quietly because like, like there's so much respect for it yeah. and I think that's one thing that I've learned about then being able to really be able when you're singing to hold the moment because mm. that's when you really have to know how to carry yourself over the music and over the you know the, the audience and whatever is, is going you need to be able to capture people and that's what I'm being taught artists in classical music has taught me you know, that shit is so deep because actually a lot of people and I wouldn't call it an excuse but it can sometimes come across it because what you're saying there is totally legit mm. like I've had that experience as beatboxing. You're you're one person doing it, and you've just got to hold them. You got to hold them. You got to hold them. Yeah. And 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 sometimes people use the excuse of like, oh, the energy of the crowd was, yeah, 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 it was yeah, electric. Yeah. And I was like, no, mate, <laughs> no. Because if you listen back to that, like, you know, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, it's hard because do, do you know what? Do you know what really really tells? That's why even my night at, at Chip Shop, it's like I could have someone on that's amazing, but if they don't know how to hold the crowd or mm. even to get. People will talk all over their performance. They could be the most amazing singer. They're like, oh my God, I feel shit. But, but what I've learned, because I because I had to go through it myself, where I performed, like, I think one of my first PA gigs that I ever did, and I remember it was, like, in Birmingham, mm. and I was singing. And but there were bare drunk people, and they were pulling on my dress whilst I was singing. And I remember thinking, I'm never doing this again. This is horrible. Traumatised was the it was, no, I was traumatised by it. But then I, did, did, then I did a PA in Liverpool, and everyone just, the energy was different. Everyone was just there to hear me. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, Wow, I got these people in the palm of my hand, yeah, yeah. but then I realized as well. It's like sometimes it's like it's not even that the audience is not for you. It's just that you have to find a way to to make them pay attention. Mm. And so, and sometimes it's just not the right place or the right time for you to be doing your thing. But it's like it doesn't take away from who you are as long as you understand that, you know. Yeah, that's a real good point. And again, mm. it's, you you only really cut chops when you're doing something live. I think live is like the most. I mean, you talk about chip shop and what you know. You're there, and if you've not been to the chip shop and you're outside of the UK, London, th th this place is almost like the Ronnie Scotts of hip hop. Yeah, life. it. <laughs> Yo, I think Mike would like that. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's got that vibe for real. Like, when, because I, I heard that like, Tully Crilly's here the other day and he managed, apparently smashed it. He was there for a few days. And Keith Murray was here. And yeah, stuff, Keith so. Murray and Immortal Technique. He was, he's yes, was, yes, I saw yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. They've all come Have, have you performed it? At uh, Chip Shop. Yeah. Uh, I hosted it a number of times, maybe okay. over the course of like maybe six months. I'd do it once a month. Oh. Uh, you know, I've but you know, I'm there. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm there, man. I'm, I'm there. Um, I, I've never is that actually hat with Ty, Ty's hat as well. No, no, this is because it kind of works with the because of the yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's Come on. <laughs> no, I've really made the for those of you who are listening and not watching. I've got an ensemble that pays complete and utter homage to our friend Ty. Uh, Ty, yeah, old Ty, Ty man. but yeah, he was to me. He was chip shop. I mean, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He embodies that. He embodies that. And but Ty, Ty is hip hop. Ty is Ty is life. Ty, yeah, I remember just meeting Ty and just not and not realizing because when I first got signed. All my band members, they knew who he was, and he was in my rehearsal, and I didn't know who he was, but he's just sitting in my rehearsal, just hanging out. But he's not he's speaking to everybody except to me, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, get the face to be so ass at my rehearsal, not talking to me. Face <laughs> yeah. to rarely smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah li literally having the screw face, but why some joke everyone else when he saw me like this? I'm thinking, but you're my rehearsal, motherfucker. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You're it's my yours, yeah. it's yours, motherfucker, you're yeah. my rehearsal. <laughs> I'm joking, Ty, you're never motherfucker, you're amazing. Yeah. But um, so then after that, when he ended up opening up for me at um at my um show in at for um Kentish Town Forum. And I saw him perform, I was thinking, oh my God, that's the reason why you didn't have to say hi to me. Mm. You're Thai. Beast. Yo, the performance, everything. Like he had, it, like he, he made my crowd, he, he prepared the crowd for me. So by the time I came on, mm. I was okay. He, the way he had them in the palm of his hands, the way mm. he eased up. And I remember thinking, wow. And then after that, we, we became really close. But, yeah, um, man. It's all proof is always in the pudding with the live always, show. Al always. 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 Like he is... But as I said, when I watched you as well, like as I said, you you don't you're so unassuming, and when the, when you start to do your thing, it's like oh. So how how do you feel about all the other um um beatboxers? beatboxers. That, that do I'll now? go ahead do it. You can do it. Go do it. It's fucking great. I yeah. think the more people that do it, the better. Yeah. Like to me, it's like having people do it just only makes your you as part of the 
history stronger. Yeah. And and also, I'm loving, like, the new styles. And, and you know, oh, yeah, you did that, okay. I'm yeah, loving, you yeah. Know what I mean? it's, like, it's like jazz. It's yeah, yeah, become, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's become jazz. But so far as me doing it on a competitive level, yeah. nah, mate. But well, you, never, you <laughs> never done it on a competitive level, though, did you? I, you no, I did it on your bypassed own. it. I mean, I did a couple of battles coming up, but there was no bat- battle com- competitions like yeah. there are now. Now yeah. there's leagues. Really? Crazy leagues. Really? Yeah, yeah. I bypassed that and I was a judge for about five or six years. But even now, it's like there's new generations for that yeah. as well. So, you know, you never lose your skill set or your chops. No. But it's just nice to see that, you to know see, I mean? yeah, because he was yeah. doing it before you had to do... As I was saying, you were doing it because you just enjoyed it for love of it. Now it is... It's such a... It's a thing now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a thing. I was only talking to uh, Tony Pencil from Second to None, Breakdance Crew, mm. the other day, from... Second to none, the breakdance crew. They were doing breakdancing to the same value in which I was doing beatboxing from back in the day and that there was no one doing it. Yeah. But you just did it. Yeah. And um, it's a kind of thankless task task when it starts getting great. Yeah. But then it also means that you can jump in and it, there's elements of it, and I'm sure you can relate to it to a certain extent, that um, the rock and roll of it all suddenly gets... It becomes so um, neutral. Yep. And... Uh, Vanilla. It's almost like... That's what I'm trying to... Do you know what I'm saying? It. Yes. The rock, ooh, the rock and roll becomes vanilla. Ooh. Yeah. It's almost like, oh, yeah, like there's a social media platform for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, like, it's weird. It's like, oh, we've got a badge. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It's not about that. It's like, you rock up, you do your thing. Like, do you remember that film Breakdance? Yeah, of course. Of course. course. But like, for me, like... Remember back then it was such a thing, and like, and if you couldn't do, you'd, you'd, you'd just be all in awe about of, of these people, and you watch. Yeah. But then saying that they would have battles and competition, wouldn't they? That's what the yeah. film was about. But it just felt different. Like, mm. but you just respected anyone that could do that. That was like mm. your god. Like, mm. oh my god. But nowadays it's like, I mean, I mean, I haven't been to one for a while. But I know is it John Z D that does breaking convention? He right? does indeed. Big up John Z D. Um, John up and John I, I host the B Boy Championships. Ah, oh, see, I need to come to some of these. You have to. Yeah. Do you think like um. Uh, just suggested for what you were saying there, and perhaps um, maybe there is a mystique in other areas where perhaps there wouldn't have been back in the day. But mm. there's certainly a mystique that's gone now that you know the, the, the curtains are unveiled on on how to do certain technical yes, techniques, yes, yes. especially with singing and stuff. Right, mm. like it's almost like by numbers. Yes, but what is the new mystique? What is the new thing that is curiously uh, not doing it by numbers? Yeah. That's the new mystique. Think about everything. Whatever the new mystique is going to be the opposite of what the mystique is. So what the new mystique is, I guess. Yeah. What, what is that? D- d- just not doing what everyone else is doing. <laughs> That's like the coolest shit I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, but it's, it's just me. Because look, like how, as I said, when we started it, when you, how did you teach yourself how to beatbox? Like, well, that's the thing. Is you just don't... You, you didn't. You don't. didn't You didn't know, right? Yeah. You just felt it. Like, for me, I think there's no... You can't teach feeling. You can teach someone how to... I can someone, oh, teach me how to sing. Like, I can teach you how to sing, but I can't teach you how to... How to um, I can't teach you how to interpret. Mm. I can teach you how mm. to sing something, but I can't te- teach you how to make mm. it your own. Like you have to make it your own. So when you make it your own, that's something that yeah, you might learn how to mm. do. Because even someone asked me how to sing and how to you know your, your diaphragm, you breathe in, you breathe out. The but to get that certain note and sound out, only I've discovered that. Because I've been as I said when I first started out with with, with my opera teacher, and I knew that I had to lose my voice a lot. I was just trying to want to sing like Whitney yeah. or Death Person, so I'm trying to scream yeah. and shout. But I'm realizing, okay, that shit don't help me because I'm only going to use my voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I found ways to kind of like manipulate certain things and and how to make it my own. And now, no one sounds like me. No one sounds like you. And this is the same with you, I guess. So when yeah. you're finding certain notes and sounds, like I'll be yeah. like, oh my god, teach me that. But it's something that you feel. You can't teach someone how feel. to feel. And also, I'm just going to add value to what you just said there as well because you know. The, the youngest in us of our time, we wanted so much of what we were influenced yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. As we get older and mature into the career set that we've chosen, uh, I think there is an extra thing that you just can't ever buy, can't have. And that's that's experience of walking Experience! On. You walk on. Experience. And, and and like a good boxer, like they can see the moment you start, you know you are, you've done this yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah, you know. That shit's cool it's as cool fuck. It's cool as fuck. And it's like you just know before, like, I got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or you know, I'm not sure. And the thing is, that it's, it's the trust in your, I would say this thing I've been saying, trust the process. Trust the purpose, purpose yeah. trust the process of your purpose. Once I found my purpose, which I knew which, which was singing, because I've got, I've managed to get myself from A, to, to wherever, but I remember when I started out, I was horrendous. I'm like, shut up, your mouth, just make up too much noise and I was like, oh God, be quiet. No, <laughs> no. Lord, Lord have mercy, why off, be God, I'm nice. I know all these two. And no one cared, and, I, and you think I cared? Do you think I cared? Anybody, I don't care, I'm like, ah, ah, until I got it, I didn't care, I had to sing loud, I didn't care, but 
back, I think nowadays you'd be so much more self-conscious about it because mm. you don't want to do so much, do so much um, evidence of you, you know, trying to get mm. yourself from A to B. But back then, I didn't care if any people didn't like it because once I found it and then once I saw that I've got the crowd, I'm like, ha, mm. you can't tell me nothing mm. I've got here. Nothing. Can't tell you nothing. Uh, but that's the experience. It's the experience. It's experience and a half. Mm. Um, people almost <laughs> post up their demos when they should be holding back some demos. Yeah, and, yeah. You know what I mean? I'd look back later on in life saying to yourself, oh, God, really, did I really post that when yeah. I thought I was good? Jesus. Yeah, but then I think it's like, I sometimes think, because that's, that's what I had, to, that's what you have to do though. You have yeah. to go out there and kind of put yourself on the deep end and you have to, you have, you have to, you get, you have to get X thrown at you a few times, man. Because if you're really serious about it and you really want to do this, you're going to carry on. If you're not serious, you're like, oh, this is, no, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. You're bail, you're bail. And then the thing is, if you're really about this life, you're not going to bail. No, you're not. You're not gonna bail. You 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 walk it till you. Become... You walk it. You walk it till you bleed. You mash up and bleed. You might die. You might have one limb left. I did it. I made it. You know what I mean? Well, that's certainly not happening in the case of Terry. Terry, I have to say this to you. So at the at the top of uh, of our phone call a couple of weeks ago, you coming over. Um, I spoke to the boys in, in the pub. I said to them, oh, you know, let's go on, on next week. She's going for the water now. For those who are <laughs> watching like, you, still well, sure, my These boys out here, they like a bit of Terry Walker. No, who's that? Who's that? Who are you talking about? Yo, I'm not relationship with it, so I can't yo, yo, But I'm saying, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm saying, like, a couple of lads in the pub, they were just like, she is. Yeah. is it? Yeah. Do I know them? No, you don't know. Oh. <laughs> and I refuse to say his name on here because he is his, him. Two of them have a relationship. <laughs> that, that, that being said, it's yeah, it, it's very nice to hear. It's that you know, obviously, but even greater to hear that uh, they're going to be seeing a lot more of you with their new album that's about to pop. Yes. So let's get into this. Yes, I, I've done. I've done a new album produced by Children of Zeus. Casual. No, no, you don't understand that. What? Me. That is amazing. And you know what's Manchester, like, I don't know what it is about Manchester. Manchester, Manchester Sheffield, Nottingham, they've, these areas have got a certain vibe about them. I've done, wow. I worked a lot with um, people like, you know, Andy Nicholson in, in Sheffield and, and Manic, American, and then there's Joe Buda in, um, in Nottingham. Big Shout up Joe Buda. Big up Joe Buda. Come on. But like Children of Zeus and DRS. Oh, my God. DRS, so, yo. Um, I just remember writing the first song for the album. This one I knew is called Finally Over You. And the first song basically just set the precedent for where I'm going. I just knew. It's only like seven songs. Mm. But um, but it's literally, from. there's nothing else that I need to say. I've said everything in each song. Mm. And then I decided to do my album shoot, which is with Benji Reed. He's an amazing... Do you know Benji? No. Oh, he Explain. used to be a dancer as well, but he right. he, he did that. He did the album cover for Children's Zeus as well. But he's when Beautiful you check him out, he's artwork. incredible. Incredible. But, um, but um, yeah, so this record... It's like, it's called My Love Story. And it's just me going back to the person that, before the experience, the person that remembers why she does it. You know what I mean? Because there's a point when I started becoming very, oh, man, I can't do this. I can't say this. I've got to be careful. And who am I hanging out with? And, uh, not yeah. that I cared about that stuff, but I knew that people people cared. Uh, it's just overthought. Yeah, you, It's thinking. often the resistance in your own head that gets in the way of the things you do. And, that, yeah. and then it got back to a place where, you know what, I literally started kind of, I got to a place where I was a bit weird with everybody and I was a bit paranoid about stuff and I didn't know who mm. to... I didn't mm. know who got it. I sometimes I felt like I was over explaining myself when mm. I felt like I shouldn't have to be explaining myself. Mm. And then, you know, as an artist, sometimes you go through this thing where yeah, that you're just rejection, hungry and you just yeah, kind of don't know where you are. And you don't know who you are, and you have people like, that don't even know who you are, and don't really, or some people that are using you to get yeah. to where the next, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, because you don't see yourself that way, you're not, you're not even thinking about it like that. But then it got to a place where I, was, I just said, you know what, let me step away from everybody. COVID kind of helped with that though, which is it's such a horrible time, obviously, mm. and some people passing. Rest mm-hmm. in peace, everybody, and you know my condolences to anyone that has 100, yeah. had people Absolutely. passing. But um, it was a big turning point for me that made me realize it kind of put everyone on a, on a level point of where yeah. no matter what you had, what you didn't have, everybody was like, "Yo, yeah. anyone could die right now. Anyone could lose anything. There's nothing coming in. We can't work." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the place that I was in for so long, when everyone else wasn't in that place, I was in that place for a long time where. I couldn't get arrested. I yeah, couldn't yeah, get booked. Yeah. I couldn't get nothing. Yeah, and, yeah. But then it wasn't about. The, but I thought they, I felt like there was more empathy for people understanding my situation. So all of a sudden, the conversations were different. Yeah. The people, the need for people wanting to even yeah, yeah, these yeah. podcasts. Think about podcasts yeah, yeah, yeah. has gone so high so since s- podcasts. Skyrocketed. Because people want to talk. Yeah. People want to have. A, people understand your experiences. What does it mean? What does it feel they like? They understand for you? the value of conversation. Yes. Now. And do you remember remembering? Yeah. And where were you? Oh my god! Because a lot of people before even COVID, before COVID. Three years before that, a lot of people were going through it as well. Yeah. But people didn't know because everyone's trying to hold on. Yeah. But then COVID came and it's like, yo, we're all in the same boat right now. Yeah, yeah. And it really, for me, like, I hadn't worked for 20 years, like a normal job. I found, went out and found myself like a little side job. Like, you know, like, for like, um, you know, I was like an essential worker that could help out. And oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, so That's I was like helping. Come on, girl. <laughs> like, could be being like pharmaceuticals and stuff to yeah. me. But it really, 
for the first time, I wanted to get up a bit. I wanted to get out of my house without feeling like, oh, this is such a burden to be around people. I don't want to talk about yeah, stuff yeah. That I don't want to talk about. But yeah. I found myself not even thinking about myself musically. I just mm. found myself being another human being. Yeah. That, that's not in the arts. That's just a human being. Yeah. Because it can um, wear you down. It can wear you down. Because when, when you're in this, yeah. we, we are different worlds. Like, People that don't do musical arts or whatever, they don't get it. They just mm. come like, oh my God, you're amazing. Oh my God, you're famous. Like for us, no, we're just normal yeah. human beings. We just have a passion, but we're yeah, just yeah. like you. And we don't get a paycheck every time. We day. don't get a paycheck every time. <laughs> we don't get the monthly. And we're, we're passionate about this shit. Like this is not just, um, mm. oh yeah, but what, you, what some people say things to me like, oh, why, um, why don't you do, why don't you just go on X Factor? Why don't you just do this? I'm like, it doesn't work that way. If I go on X Factor, that's me killing my career. I think that's the top three of most pet relatable hates that I've that things like that, <laughs> just like yo, and no disrespect, like yeah, you no, know, anyone, anyone that comes up and says it to me, I, I can explain it, so we can actually refer it to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I love the, I love the, I love that ambition from people thinking that you've got the qualification mm. that can do it. That you're so good. That oh my god, yeah. you, but you would win it. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't it work because you've got to be on the back door coming through to the front, not the yes. front door coming in. Come the, and the, mm. the amount of people that you have to go through, and the amount of red tape, and and imagine like. And you know, and this is, again, no disrespect, well, kind of disrespect to them, but kind of no disrespect, but like the people that are judging you have no right to be judging you. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, like, yeah. no disrespect, well, Cheryl Cole, yeah, yeah. You're, you're telling me that I can't sing, like, because I don't know, if I actually go yeah. on stage and she, or Talisa telling me, oh, you're not really that great, or yeah. I'd, I'd be devastated, but like, excuse me, do you know what I, and yeah. I mean, no disrespect to them, but in a way, to me, for what for what I do as singers, I see them sometimes being on there telling people that are incredible singers yeah. that they can't sing, and I'm like, I would never do that to myself. There's no gatekeepers. There shouldn't be any gatekeepers. No gatekeepers. And only because they're famous and because they've had money. It's like, this is why putting yourself in those kind of... But I get people that don't know you. They just think, but I just want you to make it. That's not making it for me. No. Because then even after, when they've been they've on these shows, look what happens to half of them. None of them yeah, really yeah. do anything after. Fleur them. East, she was fucking great. She Dope. was great. And, and still a great girl. artist now. Yeah. yeah. But then I think just musically, I think... Yeah. It's become such a parody for me, and yeah. and it's not, and this is what I'm saying for me. I don't. I take it so seriously. This is this is my life. So when I'm talking mm. about something, I don't. don't I don't want it to t- be turned into a gimmick and mm. into like a parody or or a tribute band mm. thing. Do you know what I mean? Because we're not. It's not that. No, it's not. You that. know. God, so, I can you imagine? I mean, this is just a conversation. You wait till you hear the album. Like this is your. It's real. S- this is yeah, your yeah. story on album. Yeah. And like you say, uh, I mean, Children of Zeus, I mean, we did a podcast, go check it out. I did it, oh. One of the early ones, man, like, went up to Manny and just, you know, chopped it up and fucking... An amazing guys. Man. Yeah, just amazing human beings. Like, yeah, really, and, really, really, really. And DRS, DRS, listen, he's like the new, he's like the glue, the nucleus. DRS, because I met DRS through Toddler T and um, we did a one record called, um, it's called, it's called Mid, Mid Mac Crisis, that, that album. And we did, I did like a hook for him. And then, nice. And then he introduced me to Goldie. And like from there on, we've, it's all been a connection. But DRS. DRS, hold DRS. tight, DRS. Jeez. DRS is the one. And I know you frequented around here back in the day. Yes, in the studio. I mean? I used to come to, I used to do a few bits with Toddler. I yeah, love Toddler too. Right. Yeah, so he's great. Yeah, proper, most proper happiest. Him and Annie, big up Annie as well. Yeah, hold <laughs> Annie. Big up everybody that uh, it's been frequenting in our past. I mean, we we like I said at the top, we've yeah. we've had a lot of great great times. Yeah, and uh, plenty more opportunities to oh, come. Oh, and Leo Green said so. As, as oh yeah, around the corner. Yeah. Yes, Leo Yo Yo. Right? Yeah, Yo Yo. Yo Yo Crew. Natalie, Natalia. Listen, there's bad people around there, man. Yeah, yeah bad love. Yeah, yeah, but like, Shola was around here. Yeah, well, Shola used to be around here as well. Yes. Yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> we just been we've just been very, very lucky, ain't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah. And we still are. Mm. And this is the thing, I think, we're in, we're in this place right now, I think we're, as you said, you, you understand. Because someone even said to you, if you just have a thousand fans and you engage those thousand fans... Game over. It's, yeah. Ten pound, send a ten pound or something yeah. like you know. That's that's it. You're you're right. You could yeah. do okay, but you just just have to understand. It's not about having. Oh, I've got millions of followers. Everyone likes my post. Just be intentional and just stop trying to ting. Yeah. Do what you're supposed to be doing. And you'll be all right. What a beautiful sentiment. That was beautiful. <laughs> we'll sign off on that. I think that's perfect. Really? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well, because I'm thinking of a car as well. You know what I mean? Oh, what time is it? How are we doing for time? I don't. I, don't, I can't really see what time it is. Oh, oh actually, yeah, yeah. For real, bloody hell, it's three o'clock. Yeah, I told you. Yo, that was that was a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I talking that much? See, I got uh, this mental kind of timer on my things. That's know. actually amazing. Yeah. I still got like twenty minutes though. So if you want to, it's up to you. I'll tell you what, we'll do a freestyle for them. How's that? Okay, we'll do I'll... that off the mic. We're gonna do it. On a, oh, oh on no, oh, God, oh, Jesus. Lord. Oh, we did. Do you remember when we did it that time? Yeah, no. But what was the one? Was, was it crazy? <laughs> I think it was crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it was crazy. We can't do that again. Yeah, we could do it again no. if we wanted. <laughs> I think we would. Don't embarrass myself, please. Just stop doing this. Right, Killer Killer Podcast. Allah in our fashion. Terry Walker. 
inside the place. You know, we don't muck about. Sorry if I spoke too fast, but you know, I just get excited every time I see him. So, guys, switch the subtitles on, it'll be fine. Oh, shut up. Oh, she smashes it. <laughs> and, uh, and if you don't check out the Soho Radio, go check out this yep. special. What day is it on? Soho Radio. Oh, it's, um, oh, it's every like third um, Wednesday. So, it rotates. The next one should be this. It's actually this week. I just need to check actually, to make sure more. <laughs> my guest knows what, what that, he's, um, that he's on. But um, And then I've got the tip shop. Um, every last Friday of the month. So this one's going to be the 30th. It's got DJ Supreme DJing and I've got Freshers performing. Yo, if you don't know about DJ Supreme, get your ass down at Bristol yeah. if you're in London, go down there. It's going to be fun. Oh, and the wow. food's good as well. The food is amazing. Bonkers good. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you're you. You're a superstar. Thank you. Cannot wait to hear the album. Yes, don't worry. I'll send it to you. Killer Killer Podcast Outlet in was out of fashion, yeah? Stay hungry, stay positive, look after each other, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky, people. Peace. <laughs>